before you hit. One, two, three, four seconds. Everything you feel touches and feels you. You are no friend of absent mind or false presence. You think only to stop thinking. Caris, caris, to escape the has-beens of used to, does not think of you without you, and with you does not think. Caris, caris, to be from here, right where we are, to say we, but mean I, the smell of wind beneath the ocean where you get over your friends and fall in with strangers, making good on childhood promise. Her heart stopped once while purging. Ambulance, ambulance, now she is queen of death pageant. Caris, caris, to disappear, to catch yourself escaping, to Paris for sex and money and maybe drugs, to admit that if you still wanted to be here, to admit that you still want to be here, because if you didn't, you'd be there already. To say fuck poetry and just ride trains in this country. To say fuck Italy, fuck the south of Spain, fuck that entire continent. To want to know Montana in the summertime. Ow! Providence during torrential downpours. And who's afraid of prison in Fort Benning, Georgia? Cadiz? Cadiz to dream of clean and speak of never old man at end of table seeks after copper at bottom of fountain caris caris to travel alone and miss yourself like you miss your health because before we were taught truth we were all body your body was my body like everybody's but she still bites herself during intercourse to keep from screaming still breaks into tears post orgasm because she never learned how to say i love you caris Caris, to drink Hedda all day and wander still and have absolutely nothing to do with any of this as the profound rewards only the transformative. Caris, Caris, to say yes to everything but death. Birth, this anatomy breathing vehicle called art. So the next time you sit down, 
with your guitar or your brush or your pen to create a facsimile of the fact that violets really are blue, just stop and think and say, fuck you. <laughs> fuck me too. Yeah. For until then, we, the artists, will be wearing blinders led around by aesthetically deluded umbilical cords, pulled along by the six tenths of one percent of Americans who run this America and laugh all the way to the bank of America at <laughs> us, the artists. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had it up to here with peanuts. Peanuts! Yeah! The the invisible, or the explanation of everything. And still, I can't help but think that you, 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 oh, definitely you. <laughs> you certainly you, and you, and you, and absolutely you, and unquestionably you, you, all of you. Y'all's friend of you. You still can't help but think that you contain not multitudes, nor all races, nor all genders, or even all worlds, but all galaxies. No, all universes. No, all meta and side. These spiral patterns of yours, which echo and manifest in every single medium you possibly speculate in being. These spiral patterns of yours, which are not motion so much as they are frequency, but little bits and pieces of you cramming yourselves into and out of the perceptible reality. And it is here, in this place, where the scylla, where the scylla, the wavelength, and the courageous of my shadow and antimatter, in this place, where all the alchemists, all the philosophers, all the visionaries, where all the mystics, all of the prophets and poets. Ridding their minds and dash their hearts against the impossible contradiction of existence. Man, it cannot be easy cycling in and out of the past relative to your journey to this nation. But I will be the first thing to be for all the part of what you are doing to forever work in our lot of Chris Castle, who swore themselves forever pushing towards the gravitation of variables. Forever sailing into an ocean of cozies and poppies where the lonely and gray vessels are never really coated with nectar and pollen. Many of us never touch her. And still around and around the world, you little this surely to have shared with Dickinson and Whitman, who inhabited all they could imagine, or Christ, who tried to show that we were everything that we could imagine, or Buddha. the way. It's so awesome that senior citizens can just sit on a four foot by three foot balcony in their pajamas and slippers in the middle of the afternoon connected to their wheelie oxygen tank and stare out at the passing traffic below for like 45 minutes. I can't wait to do that. Goodbye mobility and hygiene. Hello to going places in my mind. Oh weird. She's sitting on an elevated stool, a bar stool, and she's resting her feet up on the railing of the balcony, which is hiking her knees up toward her ears. But from my angle, you can't see the railing. The color of it disappears into the background. The thing really is that her caftan is so voluminous that you can't see the legs of the stool. So it looks like she's suspended mid-air, hovering like a big brown frog genie, perched on, I don't know, an invisible floating toilet or something? <laughs> waiting for the inevitable. When she goes back through the sliding glass door, I imagine possibly 
Her program is coming on TV. I'm going to watch my stories now. I wonder if the steam room at the YMCA has a code of honor that I'm now violating. That seems more like a man thing, the silent code of honor and the acknowledgement of such. Like when I went to the Hells Angels Clubhouse in Oakland and I saw the sign, what you see here, what you say here, what you hear here stays here when you leave here. Sort of like this take only snapshots and leave only footprints, except with more rape. I'm not saying that all Hells Angels enjoy raping. I only mean that if I did this either at Hells Angels HQ, the snapshots or the footprints, I'd be fucked and then killed, and then probably fucked again by the super renegade guy who's always trying to prove something. <laughs> Being aware of people's feelings and their privacy issues is important, but when you are sitting in a steam room and it is usually fairly quiet in there, almost silent really, except for some show off doing the yogic breath of fire, <laughs> there are types that emerge. There's the loud talkers. Who does that in a steam room? Talks super loud. That's a type of something. So the lady, the loud talker, was talking to another lady that she should come to the Oakland Museum this Sunday because she says, I will be doing a performance piece with my parrot. And the other lady says, you're what? And she says, my parrot. And the other lady says, you're what? I'm having trouble hearing you. And she says this because a steam valve was kicked in. So now she's shouting over the demon hiss of it. And I want to shout too, but I think it's awkward to shout when you're naked. Her parrot! I want to snap her bird! The steam abates and she calmly states, my African gray parrot. I have an African gray parrot named Randall. He'll be with me on stage this Sunday at the museum. It's so nice to have a handsome date on your arm. Oh, the woman says, that's fun. Send me an email. I will, the woman says. The show is called Nature on Nature. It's all about nature. When I get to my office, the DSL is down again, so I wander the halls with my laptop opened. Here are the things that I've bummed. Pens, cigarettes, lighters, diapers, wipes, and now wireless passwords. Whap! Wireless equivalent privacy. I choose a company on the second floor of the building called Green Tech Media because their logo seems friendly. Why, I must ask myself, why does it seem friendly? Because there's a leaf on it? Hi, I have an office up on the third floor and our DSL is down today and I was wondering if I could use your wireless to check my email. The woman is dumbfounded, almost shocked at my question. It's as if I asked her to come lunch with me at the new dead baby restaurant down the street. Oh no, she's a no. Come on, we can get dead baby patty melts and the little fries made out of baby toes and they're so delicious, the side of the cradle crap fritters. Really, I say that? Really? I'm surprised by her answer. So surprised that I don't turn around and leave. I just keep standing there with a cartoony, confused look on my face. She gets a coworker, a lady who looks like the boss. I am sorry, the woman says. We cannot release our password. It's a security violation. Thank you. She says, thank you, in that way that people do in movies when they are done with you. People hardly ever really do that in real life, you know, like, good day, sir. <laughs> I can't think of anything else to say to them, so I just say, God, this is so funny. <laughs> but I find it thrilling to be rejected. It is a thrill. You going out on a limb and all your human vulnerability and another human just shutting you down to your face. <laughs> Remember when you were a kid and you first saw magnets repel each other? They look exactly the same and they can't stand each other. That was like us, human on human, human in jeans and tennis shoes on a sunny afternoon in downtown Oakland against human in jeans and tennis shoes on a sunny afternoon in downtown Oakland. I want, you can't have. <laughs> on the brink of the apocalypse, and I can't use a Wi-Fi connection. Fuck you and your company, striving to be an integrated online media company designed to deliver the highest quality content in the industry, whether it's research news or critical networking, ev networking events. That's their um, website. It says farting sound in here, but <laughs> I'm sure I have some really important email that's come in since I last, last checked 15 minutes ago. Oh, it's so dumb to get mad at things that you can't control. Why get mad on Bart when the woman won't stop staring at the rocking man and is kind of looking around trying to make eye contact with people when they get on the train and then direct their gazes over to the rocking man so hopefully the two of them can bond in that urban way that sure is a crazy world 
And it makes her, when all he is, is a rocking guy. He likes to rock. I don't know, it makes him feel better. It's a fairly common disorder, the rocking disorder. He's gonna be rocking all the way through downtown SF, through the tube to Oakland, so what? I don't know, grown woman with your pink cell phone and all the little plastic baubles and bangles hanging off of it. Why does the infantilization of your sexuality make you want to put you in a onesie and give you a huge cock to suck? I'm a woman, baby! A guy I like, but don't know very well, once told me that the only way that he can carry on in so much darkness is to think about today and say, this is what's happening. I drank a 7-Up for the first time in years, and it tasted really good. And I got so much genuine glee from the lady with the parrot. I keep thinking about her. So I look her up on the Oakland Museum website, and I see that the performance is listed, Nature on Nature. It's about nature. And her name is either Christina Brabrowski or Wendy Reed, but it does, does not disclose the parrot's role in the proceedings. And I kind of want to go. I want to sit in the audience and be one of the few who knows there's going to be a cameo by a parrot. I want to watch her take the stage. And then like a kid, I want to have the satisfaction of saying to myself, hey, I saw her naked. And also, I knew that she was going to be here because I am like Nancy Drew. This is what's happening. Nothing at home.
it said, I've read their lives in the promised land. But when you're in the desert, any place not desert has enough promise. <laughs> Buck Owens played guitar in the desert, and Joshua blew a horn. I can't even play drums, <laughs> which they say anyone could play. <laughs> and if the world becomes desert and I'm left, I guess I won't be Buck or Josh. But I will blow my horn at the Crystal Palace and watch the walls come down. Because that is the nature of walls. They fall. And I looked over one in Berlin, and it fell. And they had one in China that people steal rocks from to build houses with. And they built these giant, ornamental, Islam-inspired arches that Islam-inspired fellas broke down spectacularly. If gravity is the organizing principle of the universe, and if that's true, and that's the case, then why is this place so messy? I can sit atop a mountaintop, and I can hear them talking, and they will talk in voices that I do not understand in a context that is alien to me from generations long past, and those that are long yet to be, I sit atop a mountaintop. And if I sit there long enough, it will wear out beneath me, and the sun will expand to envelop me. And gravity and entropy will dance as molecules expand over a wide expanse, I sit atop this mountaintop and listen to the voices who are long yet to be. And I know that I don't care if your stock options are worth $300 a share. <laughs> you still have to be nice because gravity always wins. And the universe will expand and contract like the heaving chest of a sleeping puppy. And we might be in streams. <laughs> Graham is the only student who said he wanted to be a human. All the other students said they wanted to be actual animals. But humans are actual animals. One student said she wanted to be a blowfish, Mrs. Hibbish continued, disregarding my mother's comment. Another student said he wanted to be an elephant, and another, a duck-billed platypus. Do you see where I'm going with this? My mother thought for a moment and said, no, I'm afraid I don't. <laughs> Mrs. Hibbish let out a heavy sigh. I'm a bit perturbed is all. About what? He enjoys being a human. What's the big deal? <laughs> Frankly, if I were you, I'd be more perturbed about the little girl who wants to be a goddamn blowfish. <laughs> I mean, what's that all about?
green plastic rosary beads. They are illuminated against night like the sense of her. Its lavender consumes the fumes of apple wood that she once wore upon her breast. Mike doesn't show them, but you can clearly see that underneath the blouse he's got on, God's got himself a pair of nipples. <laughs> and though it hardly seems possible, the men from that era are even scarier. <laughs> Thong tans, long Fabio hair with a flavor of the day, creating a douchebag panache that, combined with the blank, hungry eyes, quietly implied, I'm so blitzed on stolen meds and Mexican steroids that all I want to do is get naked in front of a huge shoulder cam and do whatever the fuck I'm told. <laughs> I don't need the setup, the backstory. The moment of penetration is all I want. This collection of beloved spines, a scarf in the wind curved that way. Did it fall over the face? Was it soft? Was it all waterfall hair? Oh, jealousy, come over. This is the far off it's come to. Where do we go back to for what's going to be next? Where do we say divide when we mean divine? Thank you.